new organs, no potential for new organisms. Uh, just a different variety of the same species resulted. Uh, we do this ourselves, ourselves all the time in breeding. By selection and isolation, uh, we obtain new varieties of animals and plants. We select horses, cows, uh, dogs and so on. Also in plants, cereals, uh, vegetables and so on. Uh, we select those which are useful to man which have certain characteristics and that are of special interest to us. But these populations are uh, restricted in the genetic pool and uh, they are very much dependent on the conditions, on the external conditions uh, that are provided for them. Uh, they are dependent on the conditions that man will create for them. And if they are left alone, they will either die or uh, they will uh, if they survive, they will return to the wild state. Uh, they will cease to be a, a, a separate variety. So, if life forms are more resistant in their natural state, any change that takes place in nature would perhaps be long-lasting. Just mixing of genes, whether in natural conditions or in domesticated conditions, does not provide new genes. For evolution, we need new genes full of new genetic information. There is no natural process known to science which will produce these uh, new genes, neither by isolation, selection, uh, mutation, or breeding. This is not possible. But why is it then that children are taught that one species can evolve into another? Well, I think it is because evolutionists are unwilling to face the fact that genes contain so much useful information, information needed uh, for the precise functions that the organisms have to perform. It is since we have uh, been learned how to read the genetic code that we have become aware of the mass of information contained in the genes. Uh, there's no known way to, sci of, to science of how this information can arise spontaneously. It requires an intelligence. It cannot arise from ch chance events. Uh, just mixing letters does not produce poetry. The science of molecular biology makes it clear that never in the past could there have been such a thing as a simple organism. All organisms, however primitive they may appear, are complex and bursting with information. And we know that this information must have been there from the very beginning. For example, the very complex DNA, RNA, protein, replicating system in the cell must have been perfect from the very start. If not, life systems could not exist. The only logical explanation is that this vast quantity of information came from intelligence. Every bacterium, every microscopic cell is so precisely programmed that we have to assume that the information contained within it comes from an intelligence far beyond our own. The evolutionists do not want to accept this self-evident fact. As a result, they are producing theories which are of no scientific value because they do not provide any ideas how new genetic information is produced. Now the curious thing is that the school textbooks and the reference books in natural history continue to say that evolution is an established fact. Yet, as this program has shown, in the light of current scientific knowledge, far from being a fact, the scientists are saying that evolution doesn't even appear to be an acceptable hypothesis. The idea of gradual evolution of man from such creatures as Australopithecine apes is totally without foundation and should be firmly rejected. So the statement that man is a, a recent creature coming from some primitive form cannot be supported by genetic data at all. La théorie de l'évolution. The theory of evolution is therefore unsupported by geology. There are a great many natural processes which date the earth to be relatively young. Because evolution is not a science. 
It is a philosophy. A number of scientists are making the same point. They say that if people continue to believe in evolution theory, despite the now overwhelming evidence against it, that they must be doing so for philosophical reasons and not for scientific ones. The new discovery showing that rock strata form sideways is of course enormously important. Fossil species, for instance, can no longer be arranged into evolutionary trees. It also explains why the fossil links between the different kinds of animals and the different kinds of plants have never been found. The scientists presented in this program are just a sample of several thousand who have reached the same conclusion that evolution theory is really a fairy tale for grown-ups.